You know, there's a saying, uh, touch not God's anointed. Uh, and let me say, I believe that it's usually misused and anyone that uses it for themselves are usually mm, rather prideful, you know. However, this, what just happened this weekend, if this isn't a testament to how that is absolutely a fact. Okay, so let me just get to it. The assistant police chief was arrested, the one that arrested Brother Spell, in his own sordid tale. Let's see. Assistant police chief who arrested Pastor Spell and took his Bible is himself arrested in a sordid tale. Darren Silsby, the assistant chief of police, Central City uh, Police Department, has been arrested for alleged cyber stalking. Silsby, who arrested Reverend Tony Spell for holding church services and wrestled away the pastor's Bible, held a news conference to announce the pastor's arrest along with Central City Police Department, as you can see here. Chief Roger Cochran and Mayor David Barrow, Silsby, Silsby said he was badly beaten by his male lover, but was actually him himself arrested for cyber stalking. So, there was a lot of abuse. There was some abuse, likely both sides, but he ended up being the one that was cyber stalking and the one that ended up being arrested. But, you know, your accusers are taken care of in a very legal manner and you had nothing to even, like, you had nothing to do with it. It gets taken care of because that's how it works. It's truly astonishing to see what happens when those with unsanctified hands reach out for the children of the Almighty God, our Father. We don't have to do anything. He will take care of it. I mean in anything in any type of vengeance. Many people would want to post things and gossip and all of these things. But that's not what we do. You do what you are led by the Spirit to do. What you were called to do. And things will be handled. And I think that's something that a lot of people have lost these days. They believe that they are Christians, they're saved or whatever, but then all day long they're, they're walking around having entire conferences speaking badly of fellow Christians just because they don't agree with how they have their worship worship services and whatnot and they think that they're going to get away with that um no that's not what's going to happen you know the western churchianity has been so muddled up with false teaching in such things and have been so convinced that miracles aren't for today, that um, just the most silliest things, that they don't even notice the divine hand being in control of situations like this. Some people are even convinced that Heck, if you get booked on Fox News or CNN and Tucker Carlson and Trump is calling you, that must mean that you, you know, you're on the right path. That you're truly doing God's work and you're fighting the man. I'm not trying to be negative, but why would Trump call a man that was sent a letter that he could maybe possibly be fined 
when he didn't call the men that actually did go to jail that did get fined over a hundred thousand dollars and i'm not talking about brother spell just somebody in john MacArthur's backyard in ventura county hundred thousand dollars he's already racked up i'm just pointing this out the world will hate you they might have you on for an interview once And then when you don't say what they wanted you to say, you will never be on there again. It's just a warning. And I'm telling you, the world will hate you. They're not going to ask you to be on the news over and over and over. They're going to want to shut you down, shut you up, because you're... Church is actually doing healings. Your church is actually feeding the homeless and taking care of the widows and taking care of the fatherless children, actually going in your own buses and getting them and feeding them and clothing them. That is a threat to their system. They don't want people to know that that's what true Christians do. Actually, let me go ahead and just be blunt and tell you exactly what's going on here. Some people aren't going to like it, but the truth is the truth. Both the left and the right don't want these churches True churches, healing churches, churches that have people of all races and different ideologies, and they come together and are doing good. They want these young, especially minority boys, they want them out on the street, slinging dope, doing all of these things, part of these riots burning down stuff, and even getting shot. They don't care. Because then they can use you as a prop. Oh, black kid gets shot by a white person. Oh, we got news for a week. That's how little they care. And so they want to say that, oh, Christians, that's just the white people, and, and it's just the this person true churches the true body of christ the ones out hitting the pavement doing what they are led to do are their enemy because they cannot roll out that silly notion to make people believe that we're all divided that oh because they they have no hate you got they have to have the hate and when there's no hate and no divide then they can't distract they can't convince you to go out burning buildings and also the fear churches that believe in healing and laying hands oh no 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 why do you think the christian churches were the only ones shut down there were mosques in louisiana that were open the entire time why was Brother Spell the only one that was arrested? They wanted to prove a point. They didn't, and there were other churches that were fined. None of the mosques, none of the temples. Why? Christianity, at its purest level, churches like this, Chicago Underground, street preaching, preaching in tents, is a threat to their system to their satanic divide distract conquer system they love especially when these minority kids are out on the streets doing these crazy things it's horrific and that's why they they interviewed brother spell and then oh no no we can't have him same with chicago underground i mean and these other people where their houses got completely just 
spray painted all of this stuff by these black lives matter oh we can't talk to these people because they don't hate everyone and if we have them on again they're gonna just say we love everybody and we can heal you oh no 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 we can't have that we need somebody that is compromised that's going to stick to the script and just say Jesus died for your sins you're a sinner that's not a threat to them it's not a threat to their satanic system I would say sorry if that hurt somebody's feelings but I ain't sorry it's the truth true churches are what is the enemy and when these supposed churches don't understand that and they still don't get that they don't get it they're still in fear worrying about this stupid virus they want to act like they're going to rise up and do something oh what what are they going to do they uh, sit on their computers looking at QAnon posts acting like they're doing something because they're learning about some kind of satanic agenda complete psychological operation that's not a threat to this satanic agenda you need to be doers of the word not just hearers you need to learn how to fight the satanic agenda in whatever you need to be be in tune with the spirit stop believing all this nonsense that god no longer speaks and i mean that's that's just inc that's crazy y'all but yet you see how the media loves those type of people the media does not like true churches the the world will hate you but fear not when you're walking in the spirit, he will fight your battles. Anyway, this truly is amazing, amazing news. I'm not saying it's amazing that he got arrested, but actually it might be. You know how people get arrested and then it's like, whoa, it gives them that check. But this is absolutely positively a testament to the power of how our God is not just some far off dead clay idol. He's watching what's going on with us every single day and he's fighting our battles. We have to do our part, keeping the faith, walking in the spirit, and doing as he commanded, and he will take care of it. And all glory to God with this, y'all. We need to share this. And and not in a, ha, 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 this is funny that this police officer got arrested. But in, you know, something, first of all, to po be positive for these pastors that aren't sure if they should be, be opening their churches. And for other people that are still confused on if they should go back to the churches. This is amazing. This is absolutely confirmation that those that are on the right track are doing the right thing. I have not heard Brother Spell make any comments on this. Um, and that's truly how humble he is. He knows that God will make a way. He knows that he will be taken care of as long as he is doing what he's supposed to be doing, keeping the faith, preaching the gospel, and doing, not, not compromising like certain other people, and not lying about what's going on, just being completely open, and doing what God has him to do, and what he's being led by the Spirit to do. You see, that's how you know. Because when you're being led by the Spirit, you know you're not like, should I be doing this? And that, there was so much con controversy about that. About, well, 
uh, should pastors be bucking the government about this? What about Romans? Romans. And, you know, I went through all of this. I said, I believe that some churches likely should be, should stay closed. If they're not, if they are not being led by the Spirit, and you're a pastor, they should not be in ministry. I mean, that seems like, you know, you you always, you know, as a kid and stuff, you kind of always thought that that was common sense. Like, pastors were called to preach. But now to hear all of these pastors that believe <laughs> that you don't even hear from God, you're not led by the Spirit, you're not any of these things, well, no wonder. No wonder they don't really even have faith. But I just wanted to give everybody an update on that. Yes, the assistant chief of police has been arrested for his own sordid little tale. However, keep him in your prayers. I believe that this is going to be a wake-up call for him. I truly hope and pray it, it is. He, he's obviously leading a very... sinful life that uh, that truly very often times leads to things like this and oh wow this is pretty awesome it fits perfectly with what's going on right now and especially what what just happened how the vengeance was handed down this is the Apocrypha, the Book of Wisdom, and the Book of Sirach, which was actually written by a man named Jesus, not Jesus the Messiah. It was written 200 B.C.-ish, but let's go ahead and look into what sexual immorality and idolatry does and how it ends up coming to light. But sexual immorality began when idols were invented. They have corrupted human life ever since they were first made. The idols have not always existed, nor will they exist forever. It was human pride that brought them into this world. That is why a quick end has been planned for them. And I'm going to skip down to, because it goes through how idols were first started and, and how they started worshiping, wor worshiping them. Um, but the results of idolatry, one thing led to another. It was not enough to be wrong about knowledge of God. They lived in a state of evil warfare. But they were so ignorant that they called it peace. They murdered children in the initiation rituals, celebrated secret mysteries, and held wild ceremonial orgies with unnatural practices. Hmm. Sounds familiar, huh? They no longer kept their lives or their marriages pure. A man might kill another by an act of treachery or cause him grief by committing adultery with his wife. Everything was complete. Riot of bloody murder, robbery, deceit, corruption, faithlessness, disorder, falsehood, harassment of innocent people, ingratitude, moral decay, sexual perversion, broken marriages, adultery, and immorality. The worship of idols whose names should never be spoken is the beginning and the end. Meaning, not... You know what I mean. It, it means it, whenever it started, it was the beginning to the end, I think is how it was supposed to be written. Because it, this isn't... Um, this is like the American standard broken into plain English. But, um... And it was the cause, the result of every evil. And this is absolutely true. And idolatry isn't just, um, you know, some clay or wooden figure. Um, idolatry can be, you know, money, greed, pride. All of these things are types of idolatry. And types of, um, you know, you start essentially worshiping theologians rather than Jesus Christ or listening, you know, um, 
celebrities, whatever. Y'all know what it means. But um, let's go on. And let me see. People who worship them lose control of themselves in ecstasy or pass off lies as prophecies or live wickedly or break their word without hesitation. They tell lies under oath and expect no punishment because the idols they put their trust in are lifeless. Huh. Sounds like our own government, huh? They put their trust in their friends with money or... They put their trust in climate. I, I don't I don't even know. Um, and this is exactly what we're seeing. And this was written over 2,200 years ago. You would think people would learn by now. But, um, but punishment will finally catch up to them for two reasons. First, they were in error about God when they worshipped idols. And second, they had little regard for holiness that they made false statements to deceive people. When unrighteous people commit sins, they will be hunted down, not by the power of whatever thing they swore by, but by the punishment the sinners deserve. And then let's go to the book of Syriac. Right here. Sexual sins. There are any number of ways to sin and bring down the Lord's anger. But sexual pra uh, passion is a hot, blazing fire that cannot be put out at will. It can only burn itself out. A man who lives for nothing but sexual enjoyment will keep on until the fire destroys him. To such a man, all women are desirable, or all, you know. And he can never get enough as long as he lives. The man who is unfaithful to his wife thinks him thinks to himself, no one will ever know. It's dark in here. No one sees me. I have nothing to worry about. As for the Most High, he won't even notice. This man is only afraid of other people. Sounds like a lot of people we know these days, huh? They don't fear God. They fear what other people might say. He doesn't realize that the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, that he sees everything we do, even when we try to hide it. He knew everything before we created it, before he created it. Let me see. That sinful man will be caught when he least expects it and punished publicly. Huh. Interesting, right? It's exactly what just happened. I bet, I mean, I don't know if he was even openly homosexual. But now, you know, he laid hands on arrested Brother Spell. And now he has lost his job, lost who knows what else. He's in jail. Well, I don't know if he's still in jail. He might have got out, but... Now he's in jail as a police officer. Not not the fun, not real fun. But isn't that pretty astonishing? That's exactly what ended up happening. He will be caught when he is when he least expects it and punished publicly. And always remember, greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. Y'all have a wonderful day. Like, share, and subscribe. Bye, guys.